Hey y'all, happy St. Patrick's Day to you. Um, I'm honoring St. Patrick's Day today, making Irish food. We've been doing that all week. But today, I just want to tell you, this is a quick bread, okay? It reminds me a lot of John's grandfather's cathead biscuit recipe. So you can make this anytime. It falls under the quick weeknight too, and I love that. It's no yeast, so it's no nonsense. Make bread, it's only three ingredients, and that's fabulous too, right? It's all-purpose flour, buttermilk, salt doesn't count, but if you want to count salt, you can make it four ingredients, and then baking soda. And the baking soda reacts with the buttermilk and makes it rise, meaning a quick bread. Today, before we get started, make sure your baking soda is not expired because this will not work. It has to be within date. Mine's good till 2025, so we're good right now. Um, and another thing, if you cannot find buttermilk in your area, it is important to use buttermilk. So, you can make your own with whole milk, um, not a 2% or a 1%. Make sure it's the whole fat milk. We do one cup of milk and add one tablespoon of lemon juice or one tablespoon of white vinegar and let it sit a few minutes and it will curdle and it will be buttermilk. And so that's what you can do. And we're gonna need one and a half cups today, maybe a little more depending on the day and how your flour absorbs it. So you're gonna need to make about two cups. And you say, what I do with that other half cup? We're gonna make you three cups and then you can make two loaves of bread, right? Yeah, I know. So I need about one and one half cups or 12 ounces, just in case you're not here in the States and you're still wanting to make it. Let's see here. Oh, do you see that buttermilk? <laughs> you see it's already curdled? Yes, and that's perfect. That's what we want. All right, so I'll have this to the side. And I'm gonna do this the old traditional way. Maybe if you were watching a grandmother make our soda bread, this is how she do it with her God given utensils, exactly. And I want to show you the way to measure flour so you won't have too much in your recipe. And this is how I do it. That's why I have a wide mouth canister. I got this one at Walmart years ago for under $20, so I love it. So you spoon it into your cup like that, okay? And that way it's not packed. And then you clean it off, just like that. So that's one, I need three and one half cups. So y'all know I've got to stop and we've got to count. Yes, we do. Did y'all know here in, in the United States in Chicago, they dye the river green for St. Patrick's Day. And it stays that way about two or three days. It's a plumber's union association. And um, I wish I had time, maybe at the end of the video, I'll look it up and show you a little bit because it's brilliant green and I love that. It's right before spring. And green represents life, and I love that. Three, okay, y'all can't with me, thank you. And now one half. And that way we will not have too much flour in this bread. I should have brought my scales in, but they're down in the canning kitchen because we could have weighed our flour. Okay, guys, we've got this. All we need is a half teaspoon of salt right here. And now I need three quarters of a teaspoon of this baking soda, sodium bicarbonate. And do you know the uh, American, um, Native Americans, they introduced this to all of us. They showed us how to make quick bread. Isn't that fantastic? They showed us a lot, didn't they? They sure did. So thank you very much, Native Americans. And the re this is what a grandmother in Ireland would do. She's gonna put this in her hand. Let me get three because baking soda, or if you're in Ireland, bread soda is lumpy. It's just lumpy and clumpy. Well, you don't want those lumps and clumps to be in your bread because it'll be a little bitter bite in your bread. So if you saw a grandmother, she'll put it in her hand and very lovingly, she's gonna rub all the lumps out just like this. Don't let one little lump get into that bread. Just like that, and that's also love, just going down in there. And now we're gonna stir this around. We are gonna get our hands in this, and I love that. And we're gonna make sure it's all incorporated well. And we're going to make a well in the center of our 
bowl. You see that? Make sure you have a big bowl. I could have used a larger bowl actually to do this. And with our 12 ounces, we're gonna pour right in. This kind of reminds me of that two ingredient biscuit we made together too, right? And this is where it gets fun, guys. We're gonna start incorporating this flour right in. Our hands in a claw, you see that? And I'm gonna go around and around, getting this flour into my baking soda. Now, the first time I made this, I thought, oh, I've got to get it out. I've got to do it. You know, as quick as I watched it done, I had watched an Irish woman doing it. And she did it so beautifully. No telling how many loaves she had made. Well, I got it out and I put it together and it baked and it was just a little dry, okay? So then I realized, and I, I, that's what I'm saying today, and I always try to tell us that we are in the kitchen with just us. And it's no matter if we need to add just a little more buttermilk, we can play and practice, right? And if we don't, if it doesn't turn out great the first time, that's why we can do it again. No harm, right? Exactly. So I think I'm gonna add another. That's not even a tablespoon. Let me pour. That was like maybe a teaspoon. Add about a tablespoon at a time, okay? because this needs to be not too sticky to handle, but it needs to come together, okay? So again, I'm gonna do it nice and slow with y'all today, and I'm gonna show you that the very first time, right out the chute, it may not be great, but we're gonna keep on. I think this is gonna work, y'all. Okay, we're gonna keep on and we're gonna get it together. All right, now I'm cleaning my fingers off, as y'all see. I started with clean hands, no rings. My hair's up. <laughs> we are ready for bread making, aren't we? All right, y'all, I'm gonna wash my hands and we're gonna turn this out on our work surface and we're gonna put this bread together. Do y'all notice I'm sharing the Irish flag with y'all today? I traveled to Ireland for my son, our youngest son, John Tyler, um, we did Ancestry.com. We found out we had a lot. I'm 44% Irish. He's 50 because John's 41%. So we ended up, next thing you know, literally, he graduated. And a good friend of ours who's also the librarian, and she takes everybody on these fabulous senior trips, she was taking everyone to Ireland. So we said, yes, of course. She invited us, and we had to go. So when I go to a country... The first thing I do is buy their flag, always. So I know that, like, I don't want to order it. I want to be there and I want to buy that flag there, even though it's probably made in China, right? I know. But anyway, so that's what we did. And it usually hangs in our game room, but I brought it down today to share with y'all because it's beautiful and it's St. Patrick's Day, right? Okay, y'all, wash my hands. So now, Get you a little flour in a little bowl because I don't like dipping in that. I like to try to keep that clean. So I'm going to flour my surface just like this. And we are going to pray over this bread. I need to pray right now, don't I? Yes, I do. All right, we're going to turn this out just like that. And you see that dryness? I've always tried to get it on in there, and no, I'm not today, okay? Um, I learned eventually that doesn't have to get in here. <laughs> it can just stay right where it is. Okay, y'all. Now, all we need to do is to not knead this, okay, because it's a nice tender dough, but I do want it to come together into a nice smooth ball. And if it starts sticking to my hands, I just rub it in the flour just like this. And do you see, I just kind of folded it on itself and then rolled it over like that. You see, and it makes it nice and smooth on this side. And now I'm cupping my hands and I'm cupping it like this. Make sure it's not sticking. Put some flour under there. Y'all see what I'm doing? And see, that's not hard at all, right? I know. Okay, now all we're gonna do is press it to about an inch and a half, inch and three quarters, whatever you want down, just like this. So pretty. And this is the part that I dearly love 
Um, we're going to bless this bread. We're going to ask blessings upon this bread. And that cross we cut in it while it bakes, it's practical, but it also blesses the bread. So we say, in the name of the Father and the Son, cross and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Isn't that beautiful? I know. And it also has the practical reason of the fact that it splits your bread and it lets that center cook the same time the outside is cooking as well. So it is practical as well. And also, if you want to be very Irish, we bless the bread. We're trying to get the fairies out of the bread so it'll be nice and lovely. So we poke a little bit in each corner to let the fairies have a place to escape. Right? I know. <laughs> oh, goodness. Okay, guys. Sprinkle a little flour on a baking sheet. I have my oven preset to 450 degrees Fahrenheit or 210 degrees Celsius. And I'm going to put it in there for 15 minutes like that. And then we're going to turn it down to 400 Fahrenheit and 200 Celsius. Yes, we are. And bake it for 30 more minutes. So 15 at 450 or 210 and then 30 at 400 or 200. And here we go. I'm gonna set my timer. I'm gonna wipe my hands off a little bit. Y'all, St. Patrick is considered the patron saint of Ireland. He was actually born Roman British. He lived in Britain. And he was kidnapped at the age of 16 supposedly by some Irish raiders and enslaved in Ireland. Well, he did finally, he had a dream some years later that he would escape and he did escape to go back to Britain and he ran and hid in a monastery and uh, became a missionary only to return to Ireland and take them Christianity. He is credited with spreading Christianity throughout Ireland. And I thought that's a beautiful story of forgiveness and uh, so much. He encompasses so much. I see why he is the saint of Ireland. Yes, I do. And superstition has it that he also drove all the snakes out of Ireland. Did y'all know there's no snakes in Ireland? I know. When we were there, my good friend Paula, when she heard that, she said, I'm moving to Ireland. That's old, and I'm moving to Ireland. <laughs> so anyway, um, I just wanted to share that little bit about St. Patrick. Um, and I see now why he is such the saint of Ireland, because he truly was our own savior, wasn't he? Um, I was supposed to brush the top of that. Hang on. Y'all see, this is real, okay? This is real. My struggle is real. Y'all hang on. It's not too late. It is not too late. All right, guys. What's left of your buttermilk in here? See, I can edit this out, but I'm not going to, okay? We get us a little brush, and we paint it on our bread. If we want to. If you don't, if you forget about it totally, and don't remember to grab it back out and do it like me, it's, it's, it's going to be okay. I've made it many times where I forgot, and it's lovely as well, okay? So don't sweat it. Don't sweat about cooking. That's what I'm trying to say. Cooking is therapeutic to me. It is a release. And I want it to be for you. I don't want it to be stressful. I want you to see that you can. And if you mess up, that's how we learn. And we do it again. Since I painted on that, I'm kind of spreading my little cross apart. Okay, y'all. Now it's going in the oven. And I better set that timer. I'm going to forget. 15 minutes. Okay, it's been 15 minutes. So now I'm gonna set it for 30 minutes, 30 more minutes. So everyone can see me. And I'm going to turn it down to 400 degrees Fahrenheit or 200 degrees Celsius. A minute ago, I know I said some crazy degrees, so we're going to do the official degree and time right now. First off, in the oven, you're going to have 450 degrees Fahrenheit or 230 degrees Celsius for 15 minutes. Then, 
turn your oven down to 400 degrees Fahrenheit or 200 degrees Celsius for 30 more minutes. And then our bread will be good. I'll see y'all then. y'all hear that? It's ready. Let's get it out. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Would y'all look at this? We made this together. Is that not beautiful? I know. Now what we need to do is let it totally cool down. I'm going to let it cool down for just a few moments. Um, and in the meantime, we will make a sweet version of this. Yes, it's gonna have a little more than three ingredients though, but it's so good. Uh, let's see. We'll just sit it over here to the side. In a few minutes, I need to get it off this pan and put it on this wire rack right here so the bottom can stay nice and crusty. They say if you wanna know if it's done, you stick it up like this and do y'all hear that? It's done. Since I have it like this, I'm going to put it on this wire rack, guys. That way, it can cool really well, just like that. You need to go over here and be pretty. There we go. Because we're going to make this sweet version, and I cannot wait to show this to you. It's very, it's a, it's a really neat treat because... You can stick to that version of your Irish soda bread with the cross in it, or you can bake it in a long loaf and slice it and rebake it and make the scotty out of it. You could also cut little scones with it. So it can, it's very versatile and I love this version of it. So I want to make it with y'all today together. We're going to start with the three, whoop, that bowl's hot from that pan. We're going to start with the three and a half cups of our all-purpose flour, and we're going to add our half teaspoon of salt, just like we did on the other. And this is a treat, the second recipe, I know. So let's hurry, let's hurry. And like, Amy, you're the one talking. Okay, y'all, and then into that, we need our soda, our three quarters teaspoon, and I'm still going to do just like the traditional way to do it because this soda has always got lumps in it and once we put our liquid ingredients those lumps will never come out of that you have to have them all out now so traditionally an irish grandmother or aunt or mom would do that just like that and now all the lumps are out you can sift it too but we're not going to get out of sifter right okay what other dry ingredients is that it okay so today or right now, earlier I did it with my hands, I'll do it with the spatula now, or a spoon, or whatever. Okay, I'm just stirring in my salt to my baking soda, so it won't be in clumps right now. This, we are going to put some of our Irish butter, I found this in our small little town, Kerrygold, and it's from Ireland, and I just love that. It's very rich, and I love that too. Two tablespoons are going in here. You could use your hands and crumble that in there. I'm gonna use this little pastry cutter and I'm going to cut it in here. Um, if you don't have a pastry cutter, usually these comes in sets and they stay in the back of your drawer. A lot of times you can't open your drawer because something like this is blocking it way in the back. Y'all know what I'm talking about, don't you? Um, if you don't, you certainly could use really, really cold butter and grate it in here if you want to, or two knives. You can crisscross two knives. Pretend this is a knife and crisscross like that until you get it in there. Like I say, if you have no utensils, you can use your hands as well. And I'm just trying to get this butter cut in so it's not real big pieces. And this butter, what it does when it hits that hot oven, it's cold and it steams and it actually makes your bread rise a bit too. So it's a good little addition if you have it. We're gonna go a little more lavish, like, like we've got money in Ireland, right? <laughs> it's 
instead of our poor little low soda bread, but I'm telling you that poor little low soda bread is delicious. And it's really good dipped in Irish stew, which I have made for supper. And that's exactly what we do is dip it in there. Okay, guys, I've got the gift of gab too. When John Tyler and I were there, we kissed the Blarney Stone to get the gift of gab and I already had it. So I probably didn't need to do that, but it was lots of fun. Okay, into this now, I'm gonna move our butter out of the way. I know it always looks like I have tons of stuff. We're gonna do some sweet things, some good things. Um, we are gonna start with our one and a half cups or 12 ounces of buttermilk. And I'm gonna get some of this, but I need to save some to, to paint on the outside for prettiness. And into that, I've got another green egg from one of my girls. We're gonna put right in here. See what, I'm gonna put it in here. Cause I like a little bit of that egg down in that wash too, because it helps the outside of your bread be real pretty too. And I could have done that before I poured the buttermilk in there. So we're gonna play like, right? This is honey and y'all not gonna believe where I got this honey. When we went to Greece just last winter, um, I went up on a mountain with the whole group to a monastery and bought this for months. I'm gonna come show y'all. It's a picture of the monastery on there. Let me show y'all. Okay, I'm gonna show you one at a time. You see that? Isn't it beautiful? Way up on a mountain. And at this monastery, it was after the pandemic had been going on for two years, and they were literally just these monks living up there. And it's beautiful. The outside of it doesn't even give it justice. You've got to go inside. They have gardens, and the thyme is growing. Thyme that we used to cook with, it's growing this tall, and it's blooming purple all over. It is gorgeous. And that is what the bees make their honey from, is those thyme blooms. So it's beautiful, it's beautiful, beautiful. So anyway, I just wanted to tell y'all a little bit about that. I got it and I thought, when am I ever gonna get to go back? So it's like, I don't wanna use it, but I mean, that's why we buy these things, right? Y'all, I had to throw out some of our clothes just to get all the food home that I bought in our luggage, <laughs> right? I know, but hey, whatever, I'd buy those clothes again. So I did. It was mostly our socks and underwear, things like that, you know, whatever. So anyway, guys, in case y'all did, y'all want to know that little bit of trivia. All right, so this is so precious to me. I love it, and I love that we're putting it in here today. And let's see. So the honey gives it a little bit of sweetness, right like that. Also, I zest it in orange. Wonderful little, lovely, beautiful, bright flavor in there. And um, traditionally, you can use any type of seed. I don't really have a seed, but um, here today with me, sesame seeds or caraway. Um, you can use currants, raisins, golden or black. I have dried cranberries, a cup, and they're going in. I think they will be lovely in there too, don't you? I do too. Okay, is that all our things? I think that's all our things, y'all. And let's stir. I want so very much to take my family back to Ireland. It was just my youngest son and I that went. But I want, my dream is for all of us to go back and stay there and travel the whole country. And everyone we met there was so family-like anyway. They really were. They, they felt like family is what I'm trying to say. They were so friendly and nice and welcoming. They were. Okay, y'all. And it truly is green. We went in the middle of the winter and it was gorgeous green. We took a buggy ride through a little state park that had a church, a castle, um, green grass, the ocean, had a beach and, and the woods, <laughs> right? I know it sounds fairy tale like it really does. Okay, y'all, let me use the back of this knife so I won't get my hands dirty just yet. Y'all see this beautiful dough with that egg and the honey 
and things of that nature, it comes together a lot easier, doesn't it? It sure does. Okay, now I've still got my extra flour here. I'm going to dust. And turn out. Now, hello. You stay over there. Turn out our dough. Just like this. All of you, come on, cranberry. Join in. Join in. Okay, now. Now I'm going to have to get my hands in, right? Put a little flour on me. On my hands. Now, this is where I want to show y'all we can, decisions, decisions is what we've got to make. You see how soft and beautiful this is? Oh, it is. Okay. We can make our traditional bread like I just did, that one with the cross in it, our soda bread, or you can get it into a loaf like this, a long loaf like this. Y'all see what I'm doing? And you're going to bake it, and it'll be a huge loaf like this. Then you'll come, after it bakes, you'll slice it, like that, into biscotti pieces. Lay it back out on the pan and bake it some more until they're nice and dried out. Store them in a jar and dip them in your coffee or your tea. So good, and you can see how wonderful flavors would be in the morning to have with that, or in the afternoon. But also, I wanna tell you, you can get your little biscuit cutter. You can cut scones like this, right? I know, or, you can cut scones the way I love to cut scones so it doesn't waste, is you make little crisscross triangles like this of your scone. That way you don't have to roll your dough again or pat it back out again so it doesn't start getting tough on you. So I love to do that and make scones. So you would cut each triangle apart and bake them on your sheet and you'd have these beautiful scones to enjoy that way as well. Okay. Now, so I've gone through all of those little choices, but I'm going to stick with our traditional, our soda bread since it's St. Patrick's Day. So, let's see if I can get this back up without messing it up too much and put it back into a lovely round thing. Yes, place it beautifully. Like this. Okay, do not let me forget. Y'all don't let me forget to paint this one this time. I know, I did the last one. We're going to do better this time. Use what's left of your honey and your buttermilk and your egg in here. I poured just a little more, and I'm going to paint it on here. This lets the outside be beautiful and shiny. Yes, it does. My oven, I have turned back up to 400 degrees Fahrenheit or 230 degrees Celsius. And we're going to bake this again for 15 minutes at that. Then I'm going to turn it back down to 200 degrees Celsius and 400 degrees Fahrenheit and bake it 30 more minutes. All right, y'all ready? In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Look at it. Look what I made. I made Ooh. another one. But I'm not finished. We've got a sweet one in the oven. It's got cranberries and orange zest and honey in it. Okay. Cran okay. Dry cranberries. So they're like okay. sweet little tidbits. You know, kind of like raisins or something. I'm all, if it's food, I'm all about it, baby girl. I know. You ready? Ooh. It's a win, win, win for me. Right. Mm. He wants to slide around on this rack up here. I should have left him on this board, board down there, right? <laughs> Looks like something out of a Jesus movie. A Jesus movie? Yeah. <laughs> a Jesus movie. <laughs> well, see, we blessed it. In the yeah. name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. So now you get it, right? Mm -hmm. Ooh, our oven's ready. 
Tell you what, baby, would you mm. butter that piece for us? I will. Come this way, just in case Facebook can't see you. Let me get the other one, guys. Then I gotta figure out something for supper, baby, besides bread. We might be eating bread like in a Jesus That'd be meal. all right. That'd be all right. That'd be all right. Ooh. I had a piece riding around on the dash mm. for the last mm -hmm. two days. And, uh, Look at this one. See, we blessed oh, it as well. Yeah. It's got cranberries and orange that. zest and honey. About 4 o'clock this evening, it, it got to be too good to me. I had to, had to stop and have some of it. Did you say you've been riding around about two days? Two days you? on the dash of my truck. Thank you, darling. I'm always pulling you close. You always try to step out that camera. You know? Did you have a good day? Had a good day. Didn't tear up nothing. That's a good day. Mm. Got something good done for the customer? Doesn't the inside of this remind you of your Papa's Cathead Biscuits a good bit? It really it's does. Buttermilk. Mm hmm. Good. Mm hmm. Y'all see that? How bread like it is? Mm. Be sure and have plenty of that Irish butter mm -hmm. for putting on the outside, too. We gotta let this one cool. I got hurt to finish this until we start. So we cut into that yeah. one, though. Mm hmm. Uh huh. Y'all don't go anywhere. Mm. Okay, y'all, I want to show you a few things. Um, now that John's here, I've got to get us fed for supper. And I wanted to tell y'all a few little things like what I do after this. I will leave it actually here on the island. Right here, so John can come in and cut him a piece off real quick, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Just cover it with a towel on that rack, and that keeps it nice. A tea towel, it keeps it nice and crusty on the outside, but also protects it, you know. And I also will show y'all what else I do. I put a knife, because I've got my, my uh, pan, my baking sheet under there. I stick a knife under there for John to cut it. And I put some butter. So it's all there together. That's a real nice way of saying I'm spoiled. Is that a real nice yeah, way of saying you're spoiled? Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's everything, but just go and cut me a slice and hand it to me when I come through. Here. Right, and mm -hmm. just stick it in your mouth. Yep. Know, it. So that's what I do, guys. But if you don't have a rack and a pan and all that, you want to maybe be a little smaller, you don't have all that, I wanted to show you another way as well. I do appreciate you spoiling me. Oh, thank you, darling. I know you do. That's why I do it. All right, I just got a plate. Here's a plate. It is chip, so I hope the president don't show up, huh? Right. Like Uncle Jesse. Yep. <laughs> um, you just crisscross your two knife plates like that. That way the bottom will stay nice and crusty. Yep. Just like that. And take you another little tea towel and cover it. Just pretty as you please. Or you could even... Take you a little napkin, a cloth napkin, and cover it. You also could put the knife blade that you want to cut your bread with. It would slide under there and keep it off the plate so it would stay toasty and crusty all around. So anyway, I just wanted to share all that with you, and I wish y'all all a happy St. Patrick's Day, and I want to thank y'all. I've enjoyed so much spending the day with y'all making bread and having a good time. So I'll see y'all next time. You got anything to say, John Mary? Yeah, that, that needs to hurry up and cool. <laughs> <laughs> I almost forgot to cut into this one. <laughs> y'all see how beautiful it is? You know what, I forgot to take pictures. We'll have to take some pictures. Oh, it smells so wonderful. Did you smell it? I do it? smell it. Oh my goodness. Mm. Okay. All right. We want to cut. Where do we want to cut? Y'all hear that? That looks like a good spot. Does that look like a good spot? That's a good starting spot right there. This one hasn't cooled too much. It says just let it cool about 15 minutes, and that's good because we love it. Oh, can I please show everybody, baby? Sure can. Y'all look. Ah. <gasps> mm, can you smell mm. the orange zest too? Can. Okay, baby, I'll butter this piece. You butter that piece? Oh my goodness gracious. Mm, this looks so good. This would be good for a cup of coffee in the morning. Oh, it would.
I know you like lots of butter. Absolutely. Irish butter. I almost forgot about this loaf till you said that. <laughs> I stand here like a patient little puppy dog. Patient little puppy dog? Yeah. I think you need to do with these started. Thank you, baby. All right, it's kind of warm. Mm, it is kind of warm. Mmm. 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 That's good. Mm -hmm. Is that good? Mm -hmm. mm, that's a great little sweet treat. I used some of that honey we got from the monks up on that mountain in that oh. monastery. I did. Cool. I did. This is special, isn't uh -huh. it, baby? Mm hmm. Mm. 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 That orange zest is so flavorful in here. Mm hmm. Oh my goodness, this will go good dunked in coffee too, won't it? Mm-hmm. Y'all, mm -hmm. as usual, I'm standing here talking with my mouth full with y'all. I'm so sorry. Make the sweet one too, okay? Okay, y'all. I promise to show you. Look at that river in Chicago. <laughs> Isn't that fabulous? It is a huge event. You see all the people standing on that bridge and they're all along the city of Chicago. It's just, it's fabulous.